everybody. Powered back here at the farm. We got our electricity back and so we got all our work done last night on the push rods and everything. We got all the lifters put back in. And uh, today we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do our rejet on our Super V carburetor. So pretty cool guy. I got this uh, bird plate here from Prism Supply. I uh, picked this guy up on eBay uh, from a seller. I'll put the uh, link in the comments. And uh, when I got it, it had already been rebuilt. Uh, but the jet sizes were a 72 and a 0 .031, I believe, uh, the seller said he put in here, which was to him the stock SNS <clears throat> sizes, which could very well be right. I haven't really looked into that, but um, I do know one thing that the bike, it ran okay with it just stock. It took some tuning and a little bit of quirkiness and just had a lot of mid throttle sag and shit and it just did not work well. So check our plugs and you can see here we are nice and rich on both cylinders. So we are running majorly rich. So we're going to lean that back and just as a starting value. Uh, we bought a, uh, I bought a master kit for this. So I have just all the jet sizes I'm going to need. Uh, so we're going to go off of what classicmotorcyclebuild.com says for the Super B. Uh, and they say that they've had great luck with a uh, 68 main here. And then our intermediate is going to be a 0 0.295. Uh, so we're going to pop these in here and we're going to give that a shot just to see uh, where that's going to put us if we have to go up or down or what. But it's raining here today, so I figured this would be a great time just to get the carb uh, rejetted uh, and put back on the bike as well. And we'll do the tuning and stuff, but I'll shoot that for a another video like the, time, the timing and the so just to get it, get it set. So we'll go ahead and get started with this guy. Uh, take the bowl off. It's going to access both the jets. It should only take just a few minutes to do this. All right, so step one, we're going to start with these four bowl screws here. We're just going to remove these and the bowl is going to come right off. All right, so now we're gonna remove the bowl. All right, you can see there float, float needle, everything. So it didn't leak at all while it was on the bike at all. So I'm just gonna go ahead and leave the float. We're not gonna mess with this in any way. We're just gonna set it aside and leave it as is. All right, gasket here, gently remove that and just maintain, uh, just keep an eye on the orientation. This little cutout here, you can see, there we go. This little cutout here is going to be for this little spot here next to where our main jet lives, this little uh, air inlet here. All right, so to remove the main jet, we're just going to take our flathead screwdriver. Woo! Damn. Storming like crazy here today. All right, so with just a little bit of pressure, that main jet should come right out. We're going to set it aside so we don't get it confused and probably can't get the camera to focus on it, but you may be able to see there is a number there as well. You probably, yeah, probably can't get it to focus, but the jet sizes are pressed into the, the collar here around the edge. All right, so we're going to take our 68 and just to double check, I believe, 
Yeah, 72. So we're going to go from a 72 down to a 68 main. We're just going to give it a little bit of little bit of tightness there just to lock it in. And then we're going to do the same thing with our intermediate jet here with our flathead screwdriver. Just a little bit of pressure and that should come right out. So we'll double check this one as well. All right, yep, 0 0.031. Cool. We're going to go ahead and we're going to put a 0 0.295 for our intermediate. Oh, that's actually a bit small. That is a lot smaller. I'm going to have to get uh, my smaller flathead. All right, so now that we're back with our smaller flathead, we're going to go ahead like we did before with our main jet here, and we're just going to give this a little bit of tension to turn down. All right, cool. All right, so now that our main jet and our intermediate jet have been replaced, we're going to go ahead and reassemble. Take our gasket. Cool. All right, we'll just take our float, double check everything is cool. All the pieces are still there. I guess it's always a good habit to just tighten in a offset pattern. That way you know it goes down evenly onto the gasket. So we do that with all the case covers and everything. So we'll just keep doing that. All right, so there you have it. Back together and rejetted. Probably the easiest rejet I've ever done. So we'll go ahead uh, and get this back on the bike, as well as sort of point out a few things we did. We added a uh, carb bracket for this as well. We, just because of the weight, we don't want the intake uh, manifold to sag or dip down at all. All right, so just a couple things before we put this uh carb back on the old bike here. Uh, we added this bracket to help support the intake manifold here so it doesn't sag down, cause any leaks, anything like that. So uh, we did have to modify the engine a little bit down here and I've got some footage of that that I'll chop in uh, right now. All right, so we've gone ahead and taken out our half inch nut here. And it looks like we're going to have to make a little bit of room for the bracket here. So we're just going to lightly take our hammer and chisel and we're going to kind of chip this out. You can see it's a little bit over there, but we're going to take a little bit of the space out here. So we have enough room to fit that in there.
All right, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start mounting this back onto the bike. Next, we're just going to tighten up the intake manifold clamps. All right, so we got the car back on. We got the throttle cable hooked up. We got the, um, in the cut video, after the uh, carb got back on, I went ahead and got the exhaust put back on and the ignition timing and everything done as well. I had to put new uh, eyelets on the uh, ignition cable, time it up. Uh, I'll go back through and just, I won't undo my timing because it's pretty spot on, but I'll uh, make another video at least just to, I'll put the engine back at the advanced mark and just show the procedure of how to uh, get the timing statically right anyway. We haven't done any advanced timing yet or anything like that. So, but it's back on the bike and uh, got it tuned in a little bit. So let's just go ahead and fire it up real quick and see what we're working with. Rocking and rolling. So we uh, adjusted the intake and then we did the procedure with the idle as well. So I won't know until I actually get a chance to ride it because it's pouring. It's been pouring for a couple days now. So uh, once we get a dry day, we'll get the uh, kicker cover cleaned up, put back on, get everything just kind of buttoned up, buttoned up. Uh, seat, obviously all that shit you need to ride. So. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it until we get a chance to ride it. Uh, I can't see any oil leaking or anything like that. Uh, some dirt maybe, a little bit of dirt, a little bit of crust coming off the, uh, the cylinders here, but everything seems to be in pretty good shape. Yeah, so uh, thanks again for watching. Like, subscribe, share with your friends, check it all out. Yeah, what an adventure. Great feeling. Thanks, everybody.